The church was built in 1855, and it's the third church that we've had um, in this location. The church was founded in 1810, and um, at that time it was just a wooden church. 1810. When did it become? You still use it for baptisms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, this exhibit is called Expressions of Faith. Uh, it's an exhibit bypass the Preservation Association of the Southern Tier. And we're here at uh, Christ Church, who is allowing us to use their space. But the exhibit uh, is all about the religious structures of Broome County. And for six years, a project by the Broome County Historical Society was to uh, photograph every religious structure in the county and I was the lucky guy that got to do that 
And so it's uh, six years. I'm almost done. I've been through 230 of these places. And we're not talking just churches, but mosques, uh, temples, uh, churches, uh, synagogues. synagogues. Uh, yeah, everything that could be considered a religious structure. And that's why there's so many of them. Uh, it's, I think it's uh, pretty unique to this area to have such a diversity of these. I agree. Um, George F. Johnson was responsible for a lot of the original Christian churches. Yeah. How do you explain all of the, uh, the modern uh, new denominations, Chinese temple, mosques? The, um, uh, well, it's interesting. That, uh, this is uh, Wat Lao, the temple in Barker. Uh, it's a Laotian Buddhist temple. And that was all done by volunteers, you know, you know, members of, of that, uh, that, that group. Uh, this, this is a synagogue on Riverside Drive done by a, a, a famous architect. In fact, it got an architectural prize uh, when, it was, when it was completed. This here. Uh, Johnson City. John, uh, Johnson City uh, Islamic Association of the Southern Kingdom. And that was the old uh, Carmel factory uh, in Johnson City that was uh, renovated and turned into a, a, a mosque. Another thing that's so neat about this project is, I mean, it's, it's one thing to photograph the churches, but one of the things I tried to do was get inside and, and get pictures of things that people didn't normally see. It really exposed the, the personality of these structures. So, for instance, the bell towers, I'd climb up and, and get to the bells, uh, places that people just didn't go. This church. So, uh, past... Uh, what we try to do is, in the past is have a, an exhibit uh, around in different areas. Uh, and that, it's not always the same place. So this month it'll be at Christ Church. A few months ago we had one at the Kilmer Building. Uh, so we'll we'll have exhibits around the around the area. Won't always be at Christ Church. Yeah. No, no, these are, these are uh, cards by, uh, more or less by hand, that is to say, I've got this in this hand, and I've got a, a motor tool in this hand, and it's uh, spinning. You know, a motor drives a flexible shaft, there's a collet on the end, you can put in cutting tools and polishing tools, and so I'm, you know, grinding away, and the dust is flying, and I have my face covered, and it makes a mess. So it takes a couple of days, two, three days. Very good. about a triangle that's a bit concave. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a thing called a hypocycloid, which is what you get when you rotate a circle and roll a circle inside another circle. Mm -hmm. I have a picture if you're interested, but maybe the time is too limited. Uh, I, I'm not even sure I'm going to have time to show any pictures from my computer. But um, if you take the, the triangle, whether it's curved or not, and as it's swinging around to make the donut shape, mm -hmm. if it twists, right. Right, turns on its axis. Then uh, the points of the triangle are making a curvy line on the surface of the donut. And you can feel the raised edge. <laughs> yeah. If you follow that raised edge around, it's one edge. Yeah. And it goes round and round and round and through the hole. So there's going like around and there's going through. <laughs> How do you decide how many rotations the triangle inside will actually rotate through the whole 360 of the I'm circus? not flipping a coin. Uh, okay, I have to mention Helaman Ferguson, who made that, who is my mentor and inspiration for mathematical art since 1978 when I first met him. Uh, that's a long story. Let's not get into that. But um, I like a 3 5 four side. So that goes around three, and a half. three times, through the whole five times. Okay, so here I have one more. Paths through the center. So that's called a three-five torus knot. And I always argued with Hilleman about which was prettier, 
He claimed his was more mathematically significant. But I learned from an expert in number theory uh, in Bonn, Germany, a couple summers ago, that the three five torus knot has a very serious mathematical meaning. So I have some ammunition to argue with Newman about that. Over here, yeah. Yeah. So. Did you take any color photographs? Well, I took all these in color. So why did you show them in black and white? Because I like 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 the emotion mm -hmm. that black and white brings out. It does. Um, because this day and age, you see yeah. so much in color, mm -hmm. and I think it's nice to go back to to, to how. Mm -hmm. So when you see something black and white, you're looking at it differently. Yeah. Because you're 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 because we don't see a lot of black and white anymore. So your mind is entrained to it. So when you see an image in black and white, it 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 brings out. Focus. Yeah, you just you know because your eye is not used to it anymore. It's there's no simple solution, but you know an issue like housing, you know, we look at issues around affordability. We look at um, housing standards. Are is there any exposed wiring? Um, are there any issues with any kind of bugs or rodent infestations? Is there clean working water? Is there lead paint? Um, different 